Okay, today's lab we we'll learn about the other bone of the upper limb, that is the bone of the arm or the brachium. What is your the humerus? What is this bone? Humerus. Okay. So humerus is also a, a long bone like your clavicle, okay, which forms the skeleton of the arm. So arm is between the shoulder and the elbows. The part of the upper limb is between shoulder and elbow is the arm, are also called as humerus. Brachium. So as you all know, the long bone are having common parts like the upper end, lower end, and then the shaft. So any long bone in the body, they are explained as having an upper end, lower end, and then a shaft, right? Yes. So now even this humor is also having three parts, the upper end, lower end, and then the shaft. So let's learn about these three parts separately. First the upper end, then the intervening shaft, and then go for the lower end. Line. Okay. So you might have seen this bone in someone's hand. Who would be using this bone? Who will be using this bone? Huh? You know, I don't know about he, here. So many the magicians who do this black magic, they use this bone uh -huh. usually, right? The black magicians, they use this humorous bone or even where, where they have this danger marks, you know? Danger marks, skull like that, yes. the humorous yes, capture yes, yes, like yes. that. So, so again, the, the awesome. numerous bones is used mainly by this black magician. So let's go about the anatomy now. So upper end, lower end and shaft. So upper end first. So upper end is round edge, okay, tubular compared to the lower end which is flat anterior posteriorly. Am I right? This is flat whereas this is round and round. tubular, cylinder -like, Whereas this part is flat, okay. So upper end shows the presence of a half edge a spear shape, a smooth part of the upper end that is called as the head of the humerus. What is it called as? Okay. This is the picture of the humerus again. It's the longest bone in the upper extremity. So these are a few points. So next come to the upper end, side of side. It's not a full spear, right? It's a half of a spear or a circle. So this is what we call it as which is smooth because it is covered by the child muscles. Articular cartilage covered by articular cartilage. So all synovial joints, the articular surfaces are covered by articular cartilage. Am I right? Yes, so all synovial joints in the body, the articular surfaces are covered by articular cartilage, which is hyaline cartilage, right? Yes. So this is the head of the humerus, which is smooth, covered by articular cartilage, which articulates with what? Yesterday I told you. Yeah. Which part of the scapula? Uh, the... Yeah, I know. What is that name? Pier shaped cavity, I said, or fossa. Glenoid cavity. Glenoid cavity or glenoid. Yesterday, didn't I tell you? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah? Articulate with the, yeah, articulate with the glenoid cavity or the fossa of the scapula to form glenohumeral are also known as the shoulder joint okay so that is the head of the head of the humerus humerus so after the head you have the neck so you have two necks here in the humerus so one is called as the anatomical neck just posterior to your or lateral to your head you have this part we call it as the anatomical neck what is called as anatomical, anatomical neck and one more neck this neck what I'm holding. This hmm. is called as surgical neck. What is this called as? Surgical, surgical neck. neck. So in humerus you have two so necks. So one is anatomical is neck, which is just lateral to your hmm. this smooth part, where you have the attachment of the capsule of the shoulder joint. Capsule of the sure. shoulder joint is attached there. That is called as the anatomical neck. Okay? Are you following or not? Yes, yes. yes. So this one. So just for, I, I'm tracing the anatomical neck. From here starts. Okay, this is what is anatomical neck. Whereas surgical neck is here, this one. So this part is called as the surgical neck because of some surgical importance. I'll tell you later. Okay, so head, anatomical neck, surgical neck. 
So now between these two, anatomical and surgical necks, you Wait, find... Head. Yeah? Head. This is the head smooth part. Oh, smooth. Okay, this is the head. Mm -hmm. Okay, now between them you have two tubercles. One is bigger and one is smaller. Are you following? Just look into the bone what I give to you. Observe. This one tubercle is bigger and other tubercle is smaller. Okay? So this is called as the greater tubercle and this is called as the lesser tubercle of the humerus. Did you get it? What is greater tubercle? tubercle? What is the tubercle? Yeah. Yes. The tubercle is an elevation from the surface of the bone. For example, usually in tubercles, you have either the muscle attachment or the ligaments attachments. So, when the bone is developing, when the bone is developing and even the muscles, they pull. The muscles, when they contract, so muscle is attached here. Okay, bone is developing, it's small. Okay, it grows as the baby grows. Okay, so when this muscle of the baby contracts, it pulls the bone. Are you following? How the? It pulls the bone so that the bone is elevated there. See, this is the surface of the bone. These are muscle attachment. When this muscle contracts, it pulls the bone. It pulls the bone, that's why there is formation of tubercle. That's how the tubercles are formed. Tubercle means an elevation from the surface of the bone. Can you repeat them by names? The greater tubercle and then the lesser tubercle. Greater tubercle. You have two, only two tubercles here in the upper end. One is bigger. That is called as greater tubercle. Why there is so confusion? So one is smaller, that is lesser tubercle. Yes, lesser means smaller. Smaller. So smaller tubercle or greater tubercle. Okay, two tubercles. Smaller or lesser and greater or big. Okay? So greater tubercle, now observe the greater tubercle. Look into the greater tubercle. So you find three facets on the upper surface. One, two, three. Did you find? On the greater tubercle you have three facets. One, two, three. This is great, sir. One, two, three. Three tubercles. Sorry. Three facets, right? One, two, three. Alright? Yes. One, two, three. This is the greater tubercle, full. This is, I will tell that first. So this attachment. One, two, three. So greater tubercle shows three areas or three facets. See there? One, two, three. Are you following? How can you classify them? There is no large, there is nothing. The it is there. Actually, there. this is a plastic bond. If you look into that, a real bone definitely there will be there. But here, they, they try to show. One. See here, one. It's clearly there. Okay. Okay, yeah. then second. Yes. And then third. Okay. What is third. there? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> one, two, three. Three facets. What is facing? Yeah? Facing. I'm showing you, no? One, two, three. On the greater tubercle. A smooth area. See here. One, two, three. Okay? So these three facets are for three muscles. What are they? Yesterday I told you. Yes, very good. Very good. Very good. So those three muscles, sit, yes, I, T, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor are articulating over this greater tubercle, okay? And now lesser tubercle, so there is again an area, lesser tubercle, a smooth area. So that is for subscapularis. What is that muscle? Subscapularis. So lesser tubercle, subscapularis, greater tubercle, sit, that is supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor. Okay? So these four muscles are attached over these two tubercles. Lesser tubercle, only one muscle, that is subscapularis. Greater tubercle, three. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, series minor. So now if you observe, there is a groove between these two tubercles. Can you see? This groove. Yes. Groove between two tubercles. This groove. Yes. Yeah. No, no, between no, the two, yeah. Oh. Between the two tubercles, there is a groove. That is called as bicipital groove. What is that called bicipital. as? Bicipital. Bicipital groove. Bicipital groove. So the humerus is articulating like this, okay? So now, this groove is having a lip. Anterior lip, posterior lip, and then the floor. A groove is like this. Anterior lip, posterior lip, and then the floor. See, groove is like this. See here. 
this is the groove anterior lip posterior lip and then the floor okay anterior lip posterior lip and then the floor groove is like this okay concave so floor anterior lip posterior lip so in these three parts anterior lip you have pectoralis major posterior lip teres major and the floor latissimus dorsi so bicipital groove three muscles anterior lip pectoralis major muscle okay and then posterior groove teres major teres major and the floor latissimus dorsi you can remember like a lady between two majors lady 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 for latissimus dorsi two majors who are they pectoralis major and teres major <laughs> Lady between two majors, it's a mnemonic. Yes, so in yes. anatomy, the mnemonics are very important to remember the structures. Yes, okay. Yes. So bicipital groove, three muscles: pectoralis major, anterior lip, teres major, posterior lip, floor, latissimus dorsi. Clear? Greater tubercle, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor. Lesser tubercle, subscapularis. Anatomical neck. For capsule of the shoulder joint, capsule of the shoulder joint. Head articulation, articulation with the glenoid cavity to form glenohumeral joint, or also known as shoulder joint. Okay. So now coming to the surgical neck here. So what I am holding is the surgical neck. Surgical neck. Why it is called as surgical neck? Because the humerus is related to an important nerve here, which winds round this neck. Exactly my neck, finger. So which winds round the humerus at this area okay and then supplies the deltoid muscle which nerve supplies the deltoid muscle axillary axillary nerve very good thus axillary nerve is lying directly over the bone here are you following my point the nerve lies directly over the bone which nerve axillary, axillary nerve where and the surgical neck surgical neck surgical neck before it supplies the deltoid from its under surface so why it is called a surgical neck because if there is fracture of this humerus bone here surgical neck so the nerve is here so when the bone is cut uh -huh. bone is fractured so how will be the when the fractured bone how it will be the ends will be very sharp when the bone is cut the ends will be very sharp we'll and the, the nerve end. may get injured by this fracture ends of the bone am i clear yes. uh -huh. so you have to you have to treat such patients which patients patients of fracture of the surgical neck immediately surgical by surgery by doing surgery, surgery. you have to secure the axillary nerve mm -hmm. and fix the fracture to prevent injury to the axillary yeah. nerve that's why it is called a surgical neck because of this surgical importance got it the which nerve axillary nerve axillary nerve remember there are three nerves which are directly lying over the bone okay remember three nerves here so some nerves i told you while explaining the mandible which nerves i explained uh, mandible thoracic uh, lung thoracic fascia the mandible mandible fascia nerve some nerves are directly related to the bone and one nerve is very important for the dental surgeons i said uh, yeah submandible just below your the third molar tooth that just below the mucous membrane over the bone where you give injections for anesthetization what is that nerve vagus nerve is no facial nerve will come here submandible lingual nerve man i asked you to remember it very important surgically for the dental surgeons especially so lingual nerve i even told you that it may be asked in the asp So they will mark the mandible. Mm. Name the nerve related to the marked area. What is its surgical importance? So lingual nerve. Try to remember. And one more nerve around the neck of the mandible. Axillary. Not humerus. Mandible. I am asking. Auriculo temporal nerve. Auriculo temporal nerve. Over the mand notch. Mandibular notch. Which nerve? Mesenteric nerves and vessels. at least remember one lingual nerve okay lingual nerve around the neck of the mandible or it goes up or okay yes so now axillary nerve around the surgical neck of the humerus okay so now come to the lower end so that's all about the upper end okay so now 
the lower end of the humerus it is flat when you compare it with the tubular upper end the lower end is flat and it is even little wide end okay compared to the upper end so this lower end articulates with the bones of the forearm at the elbow joint this lower end of the humerus articulate with the bones of the forearm what are they radius and ulna radius on the lateral side ulna on the medial side to form what joint elbow joint elbow joint okay so the lower end shows some features that i'm going to explain it now so when you look at this lower end of the humerus it is like a pulley you know what is pulley p u w l e y you don't know it's an english word pulley so how do you how do you lift the water from a well mm. ah you put a rope yes, yes. see on the pulley Bakra. and then Bakra. bring it it's just exactly like that right mm. yes, yes, it's yes. like a, a pulley having a medial part and then a lateral part this is the lateral part and this is the yes. medial part so medial part this is called as capitulum what is this called as capitulum capitulum i will just show the pictures you will understand someone have can you see this now this is capitulum on the lateral side okay medial side this is called as trochlea so this is capitulum okay and this is trochlea you don't understand capitulum c a p i t u okay whereas the medial part is called as trochlea t r o c h L E A trochlea, trochlea, and then capitulum. Capitulum articulates with the head of the radius, head of the radius, and then trochlea articulates with the yes. trochlear notch of the ulna. Yes. Trochlea articulates with the mm. trochlear notch of the ulna. Capitulum articulates with the head radius. of the radius. radius to form elbow joint. Form yeah. elbow joint. Now you observe. just above the capitulum you have a small fossa here that is for the head of the radius and even trochlea above you have a fossa here that is called as coronoid fossa see this above the capitulum this is the fossa above the trochlea you have a fossa this is called as coronoid fossa that's why i was talking you about uh, previous class i was telling you don't confuse between coracoid and coronoid coronoid belongs to ulna coracoid belongs to scapula okay coracoid and coronoid so this is called as coronoid fossa coronoid actually i forgot to bring the radius and all i would have shown you the articulation okay so okay no problem so coronoid process comes and so when you flex when you flex the elbow like this the coronoid it is that the uh, ulna is like this exactly this is called as coronoid process and this is called as olecranon process and this notch is called as trochlear notch the upper end of the ulna is like this okay coronoid process olecranon process trochlear notch so like this when you flex this will go and fit in this fossa coronoid fossa okay so posteriorly there is a big fossa this is called as olecranon fossa what is that olecranon i think first it is little difficult to pronounce the words as the time goes they will able to pronounce it what is this olecranon olecranon o l e olecranon okay here anterior side above the capitulum radial fossa above the trochlea coronoid fossa capitulum trochlea capitulum articulates with radial head okay trochlea articulates with ulna trochlear notch of the ulna okay coronoid fossa and the radial fossa olecranon fossa okay and now if you look at these ends the medial end see here medial end is projecting more medially this is called as medial epicondyle what is this called as medial epicondyle and this is called as lateral epicondyle Lateral. He was just like that. 
bring a chair. <laughs> See, lateral epicondyle and medial epicondyle. Medial epicondyle, lateral epicondyle. Am I clear? Yeah. Two epicondyles. One the medial side, medial epicondyle, which is projecting more compared to the yeah. lateral epicondyle, which is smaller. Okay? So now, medial epicondyle gives attachment to the muscles of the front of the forearm, or you can say flexor muscles of the forearm. Flexors. A common word. I don't want to name all the muscles. You remember like common flexor origin. What is that? Common flexor origin. Whereas lateral epicondyle, common extensor origin. All the extensor muscles of the forearm. Extensor muscles of the forearm, lateral epicondyle, flexor muscles of the forearm, medial epicondyle. Am I clear? Okay. And now, if you observe this medial epicondyle, posteriorly there is a groove. Here it is plastic, it is difficult to appreciate. Okay. You remember, a nerve lies directly behind the medial epicondyle. What is that nerve? It is the ulnar nerve. Second nerve I am talking about. Posteriorly, sir. Ulnar nerve. Posteriorly. Posteriorly or the medial epicondyle. You can feel in your own limb. You press here behind the... This is what is medial epicondyle. Look at your... Feel, try to feel. You can feel. So, in our days, in, when we were kids, we used to play like... One of our friends will come and hit there here. Yes. So, all your limb will go for something like yes, that. Okay, yes. like a current shock, you know. So, that is the... Where ulnar. you will be hitting the ulnar nerve. It is just behind the medial epicondyle. You can feel the nerve. Alright? If you press it hard, you will feel some tingling sensations in the hand. Right? Yes. So that is the medial epicondyle and behind that is the ulnar nerve. What is that nerve? Ulnar. Ulnar nerve. Okay? So the second nerve I explained. So they in the hospital they may mark here with the pencil. Okay? They will mark. Identify the nerve. marked part of the bone, medial epicondyle and name the nerve related to the marked area. What is that nerve? Ulnar, ulnar. ulnar nerve. Very good. So that is the second nerve. First nerve I said, axillary nerve around the surgical neck. To be specific, surgical neck you know say okay so that is about the lower end of the humerus and one more interesting point here if you observe if you keep the humerus like this this capitulum and trochlea they are not at the same level see this yes. so i'm holding like this they are not at the same level trochlea is slightly projecting downwards compared to capitulum capitulum is slightly upper side am i right Yes. Uh, trochlea is down. Okay? So, when you stretch your hand, your hand, forearm and, and arm, they are not in a straight line. There is a deviation, right? Mm. Yes. Yes. Am I right? There is a deviation. So, this deviation is very important in case of females. The, this, this angle is called as carrying angle. What is this called as? Carrying. carrying. If you want to carry something, carrying. This, carrying. consider if you don't have, don't have this carrying angle, the arm and forearm is straight, then can you carry something? It is difficult, it will touch your trunk and the limbs. Mm. Yes. This is helpful to carry something. So that's why this is called as the carrying angle. See how the beauty of the nature, so how it has made. So it has, there is an angulation. Okay, so that angulation is called as the carrying angle which helps in carrying or even swinging the arm. Otherwise you cannot, it will touch your trunk. So in females it is more. Why? Holding the baby. <laughs> <laughs> because females have broader pelvis. Ah. Females have broader pelvis compared to men. Ah. That's why they have more angulation. That is carrying angle is more in case of females because of the broader pelvis. Not because of any other reason. <laughs> Okay, so that is about the lower end of the humerus. So, and even, so even from the medial epicondyle, there is a sharp margin which runs upwards. And similarly, from the lateral epicondyle, there is a sharp margin. That's why it is flat. This is called as lateral supracondylar ridge. Supracondylar, this is condyle. Above the condyle, supracondylar ridge. And similarly, medial supracondylar ridge. That's why again giving rise to some of the muscles of the Front of the forearm, lateral, back of the forearm. Am I clear? This is about the lower end of the humerus. I will re just repeat the silent features what I explained. The lower end it resembles a pulley having two parts. The lat lateral part is called a scapitulum which articulates with head of the radius. 
and lateral part is called as the trochlea which articulates with the trochlear notch of the ulna both these three bones form the elbow joint what are they radius ulna and humerus okay above the capitulum there is a fossa radius fossa for the head of the radius above the trochlea on the anterior side i am telling coronoid fossa for the coronoid process of the ulna and posteriorly there is a big fossa that is called as olecranon fossa see here this prominence of the elbow is very hard right this is the olecranon process of the ulna what is that olecranon process of the ulna it disappears when you extend okay because it goes and fits into this fossa so it is called as olecranon fossa olecranon fossa so medially there is medial epicondyle medial. and above that is the medial supracondylar ridge laterally medial. lateral epicondyle lateral supracondylar ridge medial epicondyle for common flexor origin lateral epicondyle common extensor origin and a very important nerve is related directly over the medial epicondyle on the posterior side ulna. that is the ulnar nerve am i clear yes yes so next coming to the shaft the shaft we can divide it into two parts upper half lower half upper half is round and trying what is that cylindrical whereas lower half is flat flat yeah. and anterior posterior okay so lower end is having an anterior surface and posterior surface but that should not very clear because you don't have clear borders it is round cylindrical okay yes. so now very important part about the shaft is so can you see this tubra the roughness So this is called as deltoid tuberosity. What is called as deltoid, deltoid tuberosity on the lateral side? Deltoid. What is that? Deltoid tuberosity. This one. So this is smooth, whereas this is rough. Okay, this is called as deltoid tuberosity. Where you have the insertion of deltoid muscle. Insertion of the deltoid muscle. And just medial to that, you have the insertion of coracobrachialis. Tuberosity. I will show you the picture in the next one. So this is how is the articulation between the radius and ulna. So ulna, this is coronoid process. So this is the trochlea. This is the trochlear notch. This is the head of the radius, capitulum. Okay. So this is the big olecranon fossa fitting in the uh, olecranon process fitting in the olecranon fossa. Yeah. So these are the muscle attachments on the humerus. Okay. So this is what is the deltoid tuberosity. So I will hold exactly like this. So actually this is posterior side. So this is the one. The whole of the posterior surface of the lower half of your what is this? The low, uh, shaft of the humerus will give origin for, or you can say attachment. You can say okay. So usually in the picture, red, red or pink yeah. shows origin, blue shows insertion. That is for the medial head of the triceps. Medial head of the triceps. In the muscle triceps, meaning three heads. One long head, lateral head, medial head. So long head from scapula. Which part? Which part of the scapula? Long head of triceps. Infra glenoid tubercle, infra glenoid tubercle. Okay. So whereas anterior side you have the attachment of brachialis. Yes, this is the brachialis. Okay. Otherwise here deltoid tuberosity, deltoid muscle, and just as I said here in the word that uh, bicipital group three muscles: pectoralis major, latissimus dorsi, and teres major, and just. Medial to this deltoid tuberosity, you have paracobrachialis. Deltoid tuberosity, paracobrachialis. This is the muscle on the shaft. Muscle on the shaft. And when you observe this humerus, it doesn't appear straight. It appears slightly twisted. Am I right? Yes. Slightly twisted. You have a groove here. See this? Right? Do yes. you agree? Yes. We are holding the bone. It is not straight. It slightly it appears twisted like this. Okay. So because of that twisting here, you have a groove. This mm. groove, that is called as spiral groove. groove. What is that groove? Groove? Spiral groove. Because it is spiral down. Okay. So 
like this as may much of it is on the posterior side like this my finger exactly is in the spiral groove now okay what is that groove called as spiral, spiral groove again very important the third nerve which is directly lying over the bone here that is called as the radial nerve what is that nerve radial, radial nerve radial nerve so i said now until now i told you three nerves surgical neck axillary nerve medial epicondyle and okay. the surface yeah. ulnar nerve no, posterior surface spiral groove radial nerve spiral groove radial nerve very important okay so this all nerve also lies directly over the bone so any fractures in the shaft radial nerve is injured giving rise to this drop like this nice okay so that is the radial nerve paralysis radial nerve paralysis so that is the spiral groove where you have the radial nerve radial nerve along with the profunda brachii arch so this is about the humerus humerus the features and even the muscle attachments and important three nerve relations three nerve relations and the joints in which it is taking part it takes part in shoulder joint and elbow joint okay so that's all about the humerus so now all of you can come here just i'll show you the scapular muscles what we discussed in the previous lecture yeah one day you should be studied the scapular muscles and uh, what is the scapular and pectoral region right yeah so i am showing you the scapular muscles so you should tell me now what is this muscle just the subacular muscle no no this which one this is a mark here and in first spinatus yeah see it is which side it is major again again you so this is scapula right yeah. which side scapula it is left scapula Okay. left scapula this is the glenoid cavity with which your humerus will make the shoulder joint okay? okay this is the dorsal surface this is what is the spine 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 of the scapula okay so supraspinatus and infraspinatus on the dorsal side yes i'm talking about the costal costal side which 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 muscle subscapularis very good that is the subscapularis so this is what is the subscapularis muscle so what is this muscle Which is cut? No, no. On the medial border. This is the medial border, right? Yeah, yes, yes. Serratus anterior. Boxer's muscle. That is the serratus anterior, which is cut here. So this all is the serratus muscle insertion into the medial border, mm. which is cut. They are cut. Okay. Mm. And what is this? Uh, to the tip of what is this? This is the coracoid so, so process. Super, super scapular. Coracoid process. Okay. What muscle to the tip? माइनर Coraco brachialis and short head of biceps. Two muscles together it is. Okay. Short head of biceps and coraco brachialis. This is pectoralis minor. These three muscles on the coracoid process of the scapula. Got it? Mm. So now this is what is, as I said, the spine. So this is. Uh, infra infra spinatus very good where towards the insertion they have cut it which goes to the humerus okay and actually hmm, can you see this this one this is the spine i said Super so what uh, supra spinatus supra spinatus very good so actually it is covered by your deltoid muscle yes. deltoid muscle okay so inside you have this muscle uh, what is that supra spinatus supra spinatus infra spinatus now coming to the lateral border what are these muscles teres minor teris very good this is teres minor and this is teres major teres major down teres minor upper side same origin isn't it yeah same origin yeah origin i said no lateral border upper side you have teres minor and lower part teres major i think even here they are it is little bit mixed 
this is infraglenoid tubercle I guess. This is going to your the long head of triceps. See here from the infraglenoid tubercle. This is the shoulder joint. Here it's going is the long head of triceps. triceps. Long head of triceps. triceps. So this is actually the, with the along with the infraspinatus. So you have this teres minor muscle going together. As I said, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor. So you can see slight differentiation here. See this? You can see this. Yes. This is the infraspinatus, and this is teres minor. Teres minor. Minor, and this is teres major. This is long head of triceps. Ah. Long head of triceps, okay? Because these are the short muscles, smaller muscles. Infraspinatus, teres minor, and supraspinatus. They go together to the where? Humerus. humerus. Which humerus. part of the humerus? With tubercle, which tubercle? Greater tubercle yeah. of the humerus. Greater tubercle of the humerus. This infraspin <coughs> infraspinatus, teres minor, supraspinatus, and this subscapularis. See, all these are around the shoulder joint. This is the shoulder joint. Yes. Okay. Yes. Subscapularis, infraspinatus, teres minor, and supraspinatus. They form what? Greater tubercle. Uh, what is that term? Yeah, that is called a rotator cuff. Very good. Try to remember that. Maybe an SEQ mm. or even an MCQ. Anything may be asked. Or even in the hospital also. Name the muscles of the rotator cuff. For example, they, they, they pin this muscle. Identify the pinned muscle. So you write infraspinatus. Second question. Name the other muscles which make rotator cuff. Supraspinatus, teres minor, subscapularis. Like that. So anything anywhere can be asked. Either in the SEQ. What is rotator cuff and what are the muscles forming it? The four muscles. SEQ, like that. Anything can be asked. So, so rotator cuff means what? These are the four small muscles around the shoulder joint which give stability to the joint rather than doing the movement. That's why they call it the rotator cuff muscles. They include subscapularis, supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor. Clear? Yes. yes. So this is what is long head of triceps. Long head of triceps, teres major, infraspinatus, teres minor, supraspinatus and this is the deltoid. Subscapularis. Subscapularis is this. And this is serratus anterior. This is boxer muscle. Yeah, boxer muscle. A thin sheet coming like this. Where they have cut this. To show, otherwise you cannot show the subscapularis. In the crystal surface. Yeah, bones, ribs, mm -hmm. one to eight or even nine ribs yes, yes. comes. Okay, so this is about the scapular muscles. Scapular muscles. Got it? Yes, Everyone, all the scapular muscles I showed you. You can uh, watch it later also. Yes. So now I was talking you about uh, 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 talking to you about some of the. So this is what is the deltoid. Okay. About the the spaces, I was talking to you about the spaces like quadrangular space, upper triangular space, and then the lower triangular space. Right? I'll just just. We haven't taken. Shagal sila jan. Shushwaiya. Okay, go go fast. Yeah, yeah, back. Next, next one. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. No problem. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Okay. So, what muscles you have now? Still, which, which, which are making the boundaries of the long head? Uh, uh, yeah. Long head, long head of the triceps. Triceps. Teres major. Teres major. Teres minor. Major. 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 minor. Nothing much. It's mainly is the teres major. major. Okay. And then long head of triceps. triceps. And even you have this bone. What is this? <laughs> what 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 bone you find? Humerus. Humerus. Okay. So now this is quadrangular, right? Mm -hmm. Between teres minor, teres major, and the long head of triceps. Okay? This is quadrangular space. Quadrangle. It is a quadrangle, right? Yes. See here. You can, if you can show it's better. This one. No, no, that is triangular. This is quadrangular. Quadrangle. This is quadrangle. See here. This. 
This is quadrangle, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. This is the long head of triceps. Oh, triceps. Teres minor. Major. Teres major. Mm -hmm. Teres minor. Teres major. major. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the long head of triceps. Mm -hmm. So this is what is the quadrangular space. Quadrangular space. Yes. So now this is upper triangular. Upper triangular. Between minor and major and long head of and triceps. triceps. See here. It's very clear here. I need not yeah. show it again. So this is the lower triangular. Teres minor, major, and long head of triceps. And this is lower triangular between long head of triceps and humerus. Upper boundary is by teres major. This one. Lower triangular, upper triangular, and quadrangular. What's All of you yes? convinced? This is the lower triangular. Lower triangular, upper triangular. So this is see here. This is lower triangular. Between what and what? This is long head of triceps, triceps. triceps. one boundary, triceps. other boundary, that boundary is humerus, humerus. upper boundary is by teres major, major. major. teres major. Mm -hmm. Just, just show you, I will show you the picture. So this is the scapula, right? And this here you have the humerus. Okay, this is the, okay. Now teres major, okay, long head of triceps like this. Okay. Quadrangular. Then you, uh, this is quadrangular, upper triangular, lower. and lower triangular. Mm. Lower triangular is between triceps, the triceps and, and the humerus, humerus, humerus and teres major. 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 And uh, others? Other is this one. See here. Teres okay. major no, and minor. minor. Teres major. major and minor and uh -huh. long head of uh, triceps. triceps. Yes. Quadrangular is between minor, major, long head of triceps. Okay. So this side you can consider this as a scapula. Picture. Or the major. humorous one. This, yes, this one. Yeah. It's the major. Going to the posterior lip of the bicipital groove. Here. It is coming here. Here. See that? This one. You can see it here. See, see, this is the long head of triceps. Okay? Yes. So this is quadrangular. Upper. What happened? Nothing, nothing. Okay. okay. Quadrangular space. Okay. okay. Upper okay. triangular, lower, lower triangular. Space. Now, what are the contents? Uh -huh. What are the contents? Content. So, upper, what is this? Sorry. This quadrangular uh -huh. space will show Mysterious the presence of axillary nerve. nerve. See here. That is what is the axillary nerve. Axillary nerve. This? Okay. This. And the quadrangular? Axillary nerve. Wait, let me. This is the quadrangular space. Contact. Passage for axillary nerve and circumflex. Humoral arch. Circumflex, this will connect with the circumflex the neck. cap. Circumflex humoral, which again winds around the surgical neck. Surgical so neck. one on the anterior side, one on the posterior side. Anterior circumflex humoral artery, posterior circumflex humoral artery, along with the axillary nerve. They go again supply the deltoid, along with the axillary nerve. Circumflex humoral arteries, both anterior and posterior, posterior. and the axillary nerve. So they form the content of. So you can see both nerve and artery. See here, this is the artery. Circumflex humoral artery, circumflex humoral, okay, and this is the axillary nerve, axillary nerve. nerve, okay. So now this one, upper triangular space mainly the Radial circumflex, nerve. no, no, circumflex capillary vessels. See here, this is the artery, 